Hi, I am Gary Murray T. Hibbert. Shelly and I want to thank you for joining us for our Faith is Our Victory in Our Ministries live stream of today's message. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel or like us on our Facebook page so you don't miss any of our messages that can change your life. These links can be found on our website at fiovn.org. Now watch, listen, be inspired as you increase in faith for all things are possible to those who believe. Good night, everyone. Welcome to Faith is Our Victory Now Ministries. I'm so excited to be here, and I hope you are too. I'm going to ask everyone to stand to your feet. Tonight is an awesome night because Jesus is here. Not because of any other reason. It's because Jesus is in the midst of us. And I want to share a story with you from the book of Daniel. There were three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And there was a king that his name was Nebuchadnezzar. He made a golden statue. And it was told that everybody in that land had to bow down and worship this statue, worship this golden image. But Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego knew their God and knew that God alone was worthy of worship. There was no other God that they were to bow to. And it didn't matter the threats that came against them. And I want you to know that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not bow to that golden image. They will not worship any other God. And it's idolatry to do such. And I want you to be encouraged. And I want you to make a stand in your time, in your generation, that you will not bow to the things of this world, that you will not I give your worship to anything or anyone else it belongs to God and God alone and that you would not be ashamed to worship your God in front of other people it doesn't matter who was watching them it didn't matter what anyone said to them it didn't even matter that their life was threatened they would not bow they would worship their God only the God who made the heavens and the earth and that must be your stance in your heart when we gather here together that we would worship God we will not hold Hold back what praise is due to him because he made the heavens and the earth. He made you and he's worthy to be praised. That's how much they feared God that even at the threat of fire, when they were thrown into that furnace, they would not bow. They refused to bow and you must refuse my shake here to hold back your praise. You must give God everything that is within you. Don't hold it back. Give him what is due to him and him alone. Oh God, we worship you in this place and we magnify your holy name. You are worthy. It doesn't matter what we look like. If we look foolish and anyone laughs, we're going to jump. We're going to sing. We're going to clap our hands. We're going to dance before you, oh King of kings and Lord of lords, because you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy, oh God, to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. Oh, you are worthy. You are so worthy. Hallelujah, Lord. Let us praise.
We sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name.
glory to your name. Na 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 
Lord, you're greatly to be praised. You're greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. What an honor, my God, to stand in your presence and to praise you to give you adoration, glory, to declare that you are majestic, to declare that there is no one like you, to let you know how much we love you, and we need you, and cannot live our life without you. We thank you that everything exists because of you. We exist because and Lord, we abide in you and your word abide in us. And we bear much fruit. That is how we want it. No other way. We want to abide in you. And your word abide in us. And we bear much fruit to the glory of God. That men may say that God is true and he lives and he reigns because the fruits that are born through our lives. We hail you, King Jesus. We hail our King Jesus. And glorify him in this place. Holy Spirit, reveal Jesus more and more to us through the word of God. As the word has been taught, reveal him. And help us to take a hold of the things that we have been taught. That we can apply to our life. We can run with it. It becomes one with us. We actually see the very image of that word in our life. This is our heart desire. We live for you and you alone, O oh God. We live for you and you alone, O oh God. Like Paul says, I'm crucified with Christ. And I no longer live. In the life that I live, I live by the fate of the Son of God. Give us a revelation of what it means to be crucified with Christ, with the anointed one. And that we would understand that the life that we live, we no longer live that life in the flesh. Almighty God. But we live it in the spirit. We live it by being governed by your word. We live it by allowing your word to to guide and to lead us and we speak that word all the time. For you said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. This is how we choose to live our life. By every word that proceed out of your mouth. And we give you thanks for your precious word in the majestic and holy name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Well, hello, saints. <laughs> God is good. Can I have the welcome video, please? Hi, I am Gary Moriti Hibbert. Shelly and I are happy to have you join us at our faith seminar, where all things are possible to those who believe. This is why it's important for you to join us weekly at our Sunday morning and Tuesday evening meetings for believing comes by hearing the Word of God. The Word of God says we are to serve each other by love. As we serve each other, we are showing God's love. So please visit FIOVN.org and click on Get Involved to be a part of making our vision a reality so all may believe. Again, go to FIOVN.org, send us an email, let us know you are with us today, how we can help you, and how the meeting today impacted your life. Remember, we are here for you.
I'm looking forward. I'll be pressing for what, 41 days or 40? 40, 41 days. For, yeah, so we're starting. I am looking forward for the fire of God to consume our lives. It's a promise. And a lot of times when we give our life to the Lord, uh, the emphasis is on being baptized with the Holy Spirit. So we get tongues. <laughs> but if baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire, and fire consumes it, it burns up everything that is not of God, right? That's why it can purify like silver and gold and get rid of everything that needs to be taken out of it so we can have pure silver, pure gold. And we are the ones that God wants to let his fire come on us and burn up the things that are in our life, that's the weight and the sin, so that we can truly be used of God in this earth. And that is my heart desire. I, I pray that's your heart desire also. That So just want to encourage you guys that are online, to come on out and join us. Let's lay a hold together and continue to pray. I know that God is a faithful God. You know, when he tells us to do something, he's faithful to grant us our heart's desire. Amen and amen. Can I have the announcement? Welcome, everyone, to Faith is Our Victory Now Ministries, a place of hope so all may believe, 1 Timothy 2.5. We are located at 127 Sunrise Avenue, Unit 4 in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Our senior pastors are Gary Mawaiti Hibbert and his lovely wife, Shelley Hibbert. Every Sunday, we encourage you to join us live or online for our faith seminars where you will learn that through faith, you can make the impossible possible. To find out the times of our seminars, please go to FIOVN.org. When attending any of our meetings, please turn off your cell phone or set it to silent mode so it does not interrupt the service. Washrooms are located to the left once you exit the auditorium. We welcome you to join us for our daily prayer gatherings, as well as our Growing in Faith Bible study every Tuesday evening, plus our three days of prayer and fasting. Please visit FIOVN.org for more information regarding the times and locations. Want to make a difference in the lives of seniors and physically challenged individuals who are in need of food assistance in the O'Connor Toronto housing community? Well, if so, then assisting with our food drive is just for you. Volunteers are needed to help pack groceries and deliver food to the O'Connor community. When and how can you help? Once again, we encourage you to visit FIOVN.org for more information so you can start making a difference. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Faith is Our Victory Now, as well as follow and like us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Tumblr. All these links can be found on FIOVN.org so that we can help you to stay inspired, stay informed, and stay in faith. Thank you. And remember that without faith, it is impossible to please God. a reminder that on April the 15th, the men of stature at 6.30 here, I, I challenge the men that they needed to go after their fathers, their sons, their friends, their cousins, and I did get the response, so now I want to challenge the women. Women, you have fathers. Pay for them if you have to. You have brothers, or maybe somebody in your neighborhood. I want you guys to get them to come out, because once they hear and men amongst men, I'm telling you, their life will not be the same. So sometimes we have to go the extra mile and just pay for them to get out. And that's, I did challenge, and I noticed that some funds came in, and that was really good to bring people with them so they can hear how God has created them in their image and how they can be strong men to lead their family and society and be leaders in their society and their community. Amen? So let's put our hands together for our pastor, Gary Hibbert. Good evening, good evening, good evening. <laughs> what did you say, Shreve? I love you too. Hallelujah. 
praise Jesus. God is good. And he's good all the time. God is good. God is dealing with us. God, I'm excited about what God's doing in me and what God's about to do in the midst of us. I'm excited. I, I just that, you know, just the things that are behind the scenes that are happening and, and coming together. Um, truly, we walk by faith and not by sight. And to see what God is doing and what God's about to do in the next three years. I'm excited what God's about to do in the next three years. Uh, starting uh, in May, we're, we're going to have a relaunch of the things that we're doing as a ministry. Uh, and so uh, we're, we're going hard and fast over the next three years. And so we were just excited about that. I thank all of those who have joined us at 5 a.m. prayer uh, during this 42-day uh, consecration for fire. And uh, I'm just excited at what the other side of the 42 days look like. And so we praise God for that. God, God is stripping, God is stripping, and God is, is revealing things and, and making things known and building relationships. So we give God praise uh, for that. I want to encourage you, if you have not yet gotten a copy of I Believe, Therefore I Speak, please get a copy. If you already have, get a copy for someone. Uh, it is life-changing. It will transform your life. Uh, I live this. These are not just words. This is what I've lived. This is what has brought me through many uh, troubles, <laughs> many trials, uh, many things. Uh, the principles that I've used have kept me uh, healthy and strong and for 30 some over 37 years and uh, not too many people can boast that they have not taken any medicine in 37 years and that every time they have been sick God has manifested his healing power in in, 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 in my life and so we give God praise for that I want to thank you also for your faithfulness and your tithes and your offering God is faithful God is good the Bible said to the measure that you give, it will be measured back to you again. And uh, just remember, you can never outgive God. You can never outgive God. And uh, I heard a story uh, about this lady in Ghana and just struggling financially, crying out to God. And she had a business selling um, ice water and her build her, her fridge was the sea that they lived in poverty and uh, and then she just gra told her sons clean out the fridge and she took that fridge and gave the fridge gave the fridge away to the to the church took the fridge and put it on the stage of the church gave their livelihood away she gave her livelihood away because she was tired of living poverty. Isn't that something? She's tired of giving poverty and she gives away her livelihood. <laughs> she gave away her only means of income. And, you know, her son said that was a marked day. And her children have done so well because of what this woman did and the example she set. I, I, and and most folks would have tried to hold on to all that they got, but she gave it away. She she gave it away, and and I want you to know that whatever you release to God, God will multiply back to you. Cause you know what it says to God: Did God need that fridge? No, God didn't need that fridge. But what God wanted was a heart. And you know what God wants? The greatest desire for God is that you believe him. That's his greatest desire. Because if you believe him, he knows that all he can get everything to you. Because all things are possible to him that believes. And that's what giving away that fridge meant. God, I believe you are my source, not this fridge. And God says, okay, that's all I needed to know. That you believe that I am your only source. And you have, each one of us have to come to that place where we believe that God 
is our only source. He's our only sufficiency. He's our all in all to come to that place. Uh, you know, some of us, we front so much that we even front with God. And it's like the story with Jonah. I read Jonah, and uh, I hope, hopefully the Holy Spirit allows me uh, one day to preach on Jonah. But Jonah um, tried to run from the presence of the Lord. How do you do that? It says, and he ran from the presence of the Lord. David said, if I make my bed in the grave, you're there. <laughs> if I made my bed in the bottom of the sea, you are there. If I was to go beyond, in, uh, beyond the heavens, you are there. In other words, where do you go? <laughs> How do you hide? He knows what you think before you thought it. How can you hide? And it just showed how deceived Jonah was to think he can run from the presence of the Lord. So I can encourage you. And, and, and you know, we talk, I hear people talking about financial hardships and, and, and things are hard and interest rates are going up and food's expensive. But I want you to know God's not dead. God's not dead. And just remember that. God's not dead. Hallelujah. Anyone in need of offering envelope? Okay. Go ahead with the offering. Jesus said, give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Now let us inquire of the Holy Spirit how much we should give as an offering, if you have not done so already. Please confess with me. Lord, I acknowledge you as the one who gives me money to give. So Holy Spirit, I receive your direction as to how much money I should give as an offering. Now listen to the Holy Spirit, and whatever he tells you to give, please do it. I will give you a few seconds to listen to the Holy Spirit. We want to thank all of our hope partners for helping Faith is Our Victory Now Ministries implement our vision so all may believe, as we are helping oppressed people everywhere. Those of you who are joining us for the first time, please pray about becoming a hope partner. A hope partner is an individual who has made a commitment to tithe and give offerings of support to Faith is Our Victory Now Ministries monthly. Please remember our community food assistance offering which is dedicated to providing food assistance to seniors and physically challenged individuals in the Toronto housing community. For those giving to the community food assistance offering, write CFA on the offering envelope or in the message section for your e-transfers. Please send all e-transfers to so all may believe at fiovn.org. Let us get ready to confess together the blessing declaration over our tithes and offerings. Lord, you have blessed me, and I'm thankful for the money that I have received from my labor and from others, because it is you who supplied all my need according to your riches and glory by the anointed one, Jesus. I have brought your tithe, 10% of all I have earned. I have not eaten of it, I have not left it at home, but I have offered it. I have brought to you your tithe and the offering you have instructed me to give in thanksgiving. Therefore, Father, you have caused all grace to abound to me, so that in every situation I always have the perfect condition of life in which I have no need of aid or support, and I have more than enough money to give to those who have need and for the sharing of the good news. I thank you for multiplying the money that I give and have given and increasing the fruits of my righteousness. I give according to what I have desired to give from my heart, not sparingly, but towards blessings, not out of sorrow or out of necessity, for you love a cheerful giver. Father, I thank you that I have received a debt-free home, the ability to manage my finances with wisdom, an exceeding abundant return on the finances I give and have given, household salvation, freedom from all debt, 
freedom from all sickness and disease, peace in every situation and relationship, favor in every situation and relationship. Now go ahead and name those things that you believe you have received from the Lord in Jesus' name. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. to them good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over the men given to their bosom. And I thank you, Lord God. I thank you and I give you all the praise and all the glory. I break the curse of poverty and lack off of them. And I thank you cause an abundance of multiplication of their seed sown. By Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's stand and do our confession. Hallelujah. Let us declare boldly together. I choose to listen to only what the word of God tells me I am. Therefore, I believe I am loved. I am accepted. I am glorified. I am disciplined. I am sanctified. I am complete. Having nothing missing and nothing broken in my spirit, soul, body, finances, or relationships. I am forgiven. I am rich. I am righteous. I am healed. I am bold. I am alive from the dead. I'm no longer subject to death. I am free from Satan. I am free from bondage. I'm free from witchcraft. I'm free from death and the grave. I am free from addiction. I am protected. I am loved. I'm full of faith. I'm full of the Holy Spirit and power. I am wise. I'm victorious and successful in everything I do and in every circumstance. By Jesus. Oh, I am favored. I am blessed. I believe Jesus the Christ can do anything through me according to the knowledge of who I am in Christ Jesus, my Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God is good. Thank you, Christina, for being on the ball. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, let's get right into the word. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. God, you're good. Hallelujah. God, you're awesome. Praise you, Jesus. Father, we just lift up right now Valerie Williamson before you. And by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I speak to every spirit of infirmity. And I command you, spirit of infirmity, you loose her now and you let her go by the name of Jesus. Satan, you take your hands off of her body right now by the name of Jesus. Satan, you loose her body by Jesus' name and she is free. She's healed by Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, let's go to Genesis chapter 17, verse 1 to 5. Genesis 17. I want to talk to you tonight. What you say you are, you are. What you say you are, you are. So you need to be mindful of what you say you are. And when we look at Genesis chapter 17, 1 to 5, it says, When Abram was 99 years old, is 99 years old an old man? Yes, he is, 99 years old. How, how many of you have ever met a 99-year-old person? On TV? <laughs> I personally have never met a 99-year-old person. You have met a 103 and 106. I, actually, that, that's, well, I, I, I've met a lady that's 105 now, but when I met her, she was in her 90s. So I, I have not, I know of her, but I have not met her as, since she's, uh, probably when I met her, she was probably about 92 or something like that. 
But we know, I guess, yeah, I guess we could say we know her. What? 107. Okay. But they looked old, right? <laughs> she still, but she still looks old. She still looks old. She, does she look 60? Does she look 60? Does she look 40? <laughs> she looked like she's in her 80s. Okay. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between you, between me and you, and will multiply you exceedingly. Then Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, look, my covenant is with you. Now watch this. I want you to pay attention to the words. It says, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. What tense is shall? What, what tense is shall? What tense is shall? Has, when do you say that shall happen? Has it happened yet? Is it going to happen? It might happen. It's in the future somewhere. So you don't know where in the future, do you? When I say I shall do something, you don't know when it's going to happen. It could be tomorrow. It could be the next day. It could be a year from now. It could be 10 years from now. Shall says it's in the future. Correct? So God says, you shall, I sh you shall be a father of many nations. And, what he says, and he says, no longer shall your name be called Abram. But your name shall be Abraham or Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. Do you see the difference? What does, if, it, if someone says, I have, what does it mean? You have it now, correct? So God says to Abram, he says to Abram, Avram, he says to Avram, you shall be a father of many nations. But he says to Abraham, I have made you a father of many nations. I want you to see the difference. I want you to know that Avram, Avram is the old man. Avraham is a new man. Avram was 99 years old and his body was now dead. Avraham had a new body. Matter of fact, he had five more children after Isaac. He gave birth to children when he was like 135 or something up there. 135 years, he still was fathering children. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I want you to see that before you were in Christ, your identity was with Abraham. You only had hope. You only had expectation. But in Christ, your identity is with Abraham. Do you notice in the New Testament, Abraham is never mentioned? Abraham is never mentioned in the New Testament. If you didn't read the Old Testament, you would never know that there was a man named Abraham. You would never know that this man existed. You would only think that Abraham existed. There is no mention of the existence of that old man. Even when it refers to him, he still called Abraham. And I want you to see something. I want you to get this. That in order to change Abraham's physical
physical body, he had to change his identity. He had to change what Abram called himself. In order for Abram to experience the miracle of the transformation of his physical body from a dead man to a man who was dying, who was not able to have children anymore, to a man that was able to have a, a children, he had to go through a, an identity change. He had to no longer be called an exalted father, but he had to be called a father of many. And God did the same thing to Sarai, a noble woman. God, in order to change their physical body, God had to change their identity. God had to change how they saw themselves. God had to change how they saw themselves. Sarai, your name will no longer call Sarai, but she shall be called Sarah, princess. God needed them to change their identity in order to change their physical situation. And because God was teaching them and showing them the principle, what you say you are, you are. What you say you are, you are. What you say you are, you are. That's why you will never hear me say, I am sick. You will never hear me say, I'm sick and tired. You will never hear me say, I'm broke. You will never hear me say, I'm sad. You will never hear me say, I'm depressed. You will never hear me say, I'm afraid. You will never hear me say, I'm broke. You will never hear me say it. You will never hear me say, because what you say you are, you are. So what do you do if you go to the doctor? Just tell the doctor what's wrong with you. Don't tell the doctor you're sick. In Isaiah, it says that they that have whose sins have been forgiven them shall not say I am sick. God tells us we're not to say that we're sick. Why? First Peter chapter 2 verse 24. What does it tell us? It says by whose wounds you were healed. By whose stripes you were healed. By whose stripes you were healed. You were healed. Call yourself healed. What you say you are, you are. What you say you are, you are. What you say you are, you are. First Corinthians 4.13 says that you are already rich. You are already rich. And one of the things I realize is that many of you are sitting under my teaching and you're still saying you're sick. You're still saying you're depressed. You're still saying you're anxious. You're still saying you're afraid. You sit under this word year after year after year after year after year after year. And you're still calling yourself what you don't want. What's the disconnect? Why is it that you're sitting under a word that is telling you that you have what you say and you keep saying it? That tells me that you're not saying what you ought to say when you need to say it in the abundance in which you need to say it. What you're doing is, is, is you hear what the word says, but you're watching television. You're hearing what the world is telling you. What you say you are, you are. What you say you are, you are. And what you say you are, you will become. God said to Abram, you shall be a father of many nations. But how is he going to become a father of many nations? 
He had to change his identity now. I have made you. In order for him to become a father of many nations, he had to be a father of many nations now. In order for you to become, you must be. In order for you to become, you must be. In order for you to become, you must be. In order for you to become healed, you must be healed. In order for you to become rich, you must be rich. In order for you to become glad, you must be glad. In order for you to become successful, you must be successful when now. You must call yourself successful now. You must call yourself healed now. You must call yourself prosperous now. You must call yourself delivered now. You miss call yourself now. Abraham called himself father of many nations now. Even though he was 99 years old, he had to say what he was now in order for him to become what God said he would be. He had to be that now. We were created in the image and likeness of God and we are to speak like God. Romans 4, 16 to 17. He says, Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise may be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Was Abram a father of many? No, he was not. But God said, I have made you a father of many. And he said, I shall make you. You shall be a father of many. But in order for him to become a father of many, God says, you are a father of many. That means God calls those things that do not exist as though they did. God said light is. Was there light? When God said light is, was there light? What was there? Darkness. Does God call things that be as they be? He calls things as he wants them to be. God calls things as he wants them to be. Do you want to be sick? No. So why are you saying you're sick? Do you want to be broke? No. So why are you saying you're broke? Do you want to be depressed? No. So why are you saying you're depressed? Do you want to be a failure? No. So why are you saying you're a failure? Do you know it takes the same amount of energy and words to say I'm a success? It takes the same amount of energy and words to say I'm healed. It takes the same amount of work, words and energy to say that I am free. So why would you speak what you don't want why? Because the world is programmed to death. To death, defeat, and failure, and sickness, and disease. Because that's what you see. Romans chapter 4, verse 19 to 21. He says, And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead. Since he was about a hundred years old, being 99 years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded, convinced that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Now notice how Abram or Abraham, Abraham, was not weakened in faith because he considered not his body. He did not consider the age of his body. He did not consider the fact that his body was now dead, not physically dead, but reproductively dead. His body could not produce 
his life at 99 years old. Neither did he consider the fact that Sarah's womb was dead. It was never able to produce life. I want you to know that when your body is in pain, it's telling you it's in pain. Your body's in pain. It's telling you you're in pain. You feel your, your chest and you can feel the lump. You feel your throat, you can feel the lump. You can see the lump. You can see the sores. You can see the fact that you're not able to lift your hand. You're in a wheelchair, you see the fact that you're not able to lift your legs. You can't get up out of the wheelchair and walk. You see the fact that you can't see. All you see is blackness. You see the fact that your ears are deaf, that you do not hear. You see your bank account, that there's not enough money in there to take care of your financial needs. You see. But Abraham considered not his own body. We consider our own body too much. We consider our own finances too much. We consider our own job too much. We consider our present situation and what we're feeling. And, and, and listen, I understand that the pain takes over your mind. When you're in pain, it takes over your mind. You become conscious you are in pain. And it wants you to speak that as your identity. But you've got to make a decision that if you're going to be strengthened in faith and not weakened in faith, don't speak the condition. Don't speak it. It wants you to speak it. It wants you to say it. But you've got to say it what the God's word says you are. This is not the first time you're hearing me say this. You've heard me say this many times, but you're not getting it. Because until you get it, you won't get it. Until you get it, you don't get it. And the devil will keep reminding you that you're sick. Abraham's body was there to remind him you are almost 100 years old. That promise of God that you will have a son and you'll be a father of many, it's not going to happen. Sarah's womb is dead. It's not going to happen. The old man is body conscious. It's physical conscious. But the new man is God conscious. God's promise conscious. And no matter how hard it seems, no matter how much the pain bites, no matter how impossible it seems, surrender to the promise of God. Surrender to the promise of God. I am healed. I am rich. I am free. I am bold. I am glad. I am what God says. I am beautiful. I am accepted in the blood. I am not afraid. Because God has not given me a spirit of fear. Say what God says you are. Say what God says you are. You are what you say you are. You will become what you say you are. And if you want to become what God says you are, you got to say that you are what God says you are. No matter how much pain you're in, I'm healed. No matter how much pain I'm, I'm in, you're in, I'm healed. No matter how empty your bank account, I'm rich. I'm all my God supplies all my needs. It doesn't matter how depressed and how sad or how anxious you feel. You've got to declare that you have not the spirit of fear. You have not a spirit of anxiety. You are not anxious for anything. You're not anxious for anything.
You're not anxious for anything. Anything. Anything whatsoever. You're not anxious. But you got to say, don't agree with your body. Don't agree with your finances. Don't agree with your situation. Is it easy? No. But nothing in life that is worth getting is ever easy. It's never easy. Never easy. Never easy. What you say you are, you shall become. Abraham, you shall be a father of many nations. Abraham, I have made you a father of many nations. So from that day forward, what did 